Good night, I'm Mark Seal. Chris Gale has added another impressive accolade to his list of achievements. Gale has become the batsman with the most ODI centuries for the West Indies. And he also joined Hashim Amla and Sachin Tendukar as only the third batsman in the history of ODI cricket to score centuries against 11 different countries. As he led the Wendy's to a 60-run victory against the United Arab Emirates at the ICC World Cup qualifiers in Zimbabwe today. The Wendy's won the toss, he led it to bat and posted a massive total of 357 for 4 in their 50 overs. Gale and Shimron Hetmeyer led the way, with Gale collecting his 23rd ODI century, scoring 123 off 91 deliveries, laced with 11 sixes and 7 fours. While the player of the match, Hetmeyer, picked his maiden ODI century with 127 from 93 deliveries, inclusive of 14 fours and four sixes. Now, in reply, the UAE put up a valiant fight before they fell away, way short of the target, only reaching 297 for a six. Rami Sajad getting 112, though. The Wendy's skipper, Jason Holder, was the pick of the bowlers, taking 5 for 53. The Wendy's will next take on Papua New Guinea on Saturday. So, in other games played today, though, Ireland defeated the said Papua New Guinea by four wickets after PNG made a 235, to which Ireland replied with 237 for six. Now, in Group B, hosts Zimbabwe narrowly got home against Afghanistan in a match that went right down to the wire. Scored in that match, Zimbabwe 196, Afghanistan 194. And Scotland beat Hong Kong, also by four wickets. Scored in that match, Hong Kong 91, Scotland 92 for six. Jermaine Blackwood fell short of a century, as the West Indies A are currently taking on England Lions in the first day and night unofficial ODI at the Coolidge Cricket Ground in Antigua. Winning the toss and batting, the Wendy's A scored 272 all out in their 50 overs. Blackwood led the way with 99 off 118 balls, inclusive of 5 fours and 3 sixes. Hakeem Cornwall chipped in with 44, while there were two wickets apiece for Matt Parkinson, Richard Gleeson, and Paul Coughlin. In reply, the England Lions a few moments ago were 121 for 6 off 24 overs. Medium pacer Kimo Paul has picked up three wickets so far. Christchurch Foundation have taken first dibs in both the boys and girls championships as BSAC 2018 got underway today at the National Stadium. At the end of day one of the Esther Maynard Zone, Foundation girls lead that standing with 293.5 points, ahead of Springer Memorial with 254 and Harrison College with 158. And in the boys, Foundation have so far amassed 226. Harrison College 190 and St. Leonard's third with 148.5. Now here's a look at the highly anticipated sprints with CBC's Anne-Marie Burke. BSAC is off and running straight into the fast lane. These are 100 meter events. Under 13 girls has a class act by the name of Shantae Morris of Christchurch Foundation. Not only did she demolish the field, but the all zone record of 13.43 seconds was out the window. The new time 13.07, away behind in the heat was St. George's Keandra John and Springer's Kalia Goodrich. Also wants to watch our combo mares Kelia Bentham and Aline's Tamika husbands. These two will make a competitive feel as the under 13 girls are looking good. So let's see how the boys are shaping up and watch out. Here comes Jaleel Grovesner. Lane number five in the green and yellow of St. George Secondary is done and dusted. The fastest time of 13.46 seconds is on the books. In second for the fourth fastest time overall was Harrison College's Tevin Brathwaite. Let's step it up with division. The under-15 girl, she was on the outside of the field. Springer's little freight train, Naomi Ford Hines, holding off the challenge of foundations. Janae Goodman, expect these two to clash all championship. Let's give you the times, 13.05 and 13.06. I'll leave it there. The top two on the 15 boys also ran in the same heat. It was a battle of Parkinson and St. Leonard's boys. Ashen Vaughn and Carl Ford Blaze. And it was Vaughn of Parkinson to edge out Ford Blaze. 11.99 seconds and 12.1 for the times. Only two heats in the under-17 girls and the first one was conquered by a familiar name, Lalani Haddock. Christchurch Foundation stopping the clock at 12.73 seconds. Second in the heat, Harrison College's Sadia Russell and third Springer's Ashley Jordan. 
He too delivered the second fastest overall time in the middle of the field, changing gears in the final 30 meters. Mariel Corbin of Combo Mare takes it, her time 12.77 seconds. Foundation's Jaliah Denny also in there 12.86 and Springer's Zariah Graves 12.89. The turn of the boys and they call him Super Carvalho, Mikhail Carvalho of Combomir. He smoothly executed this race to post the fastest time of 11.40 seconds. Harrison College's Brandon Watson was right behind him, but with a time of 11.57 was fifth fastest overall. That's because this heat with LRZ Daquan Clark had pace like fire. It was a fight to the line. Clark 11.45, Foundation Saviola Thomas 11.54 and Harrison College's Khalil Roberts 11.67. Under 20 girls has a powerhouse in their mix. Hannah Connell of the Foundation School is in a class all her own. She is in fine form, just making it another great day at the office. Her time, 12.17 seconds. Springer Sierra Coward with 12.94 was third fastest overall, with Harrison College's Janaya Drake's finishing in 13.46. Also looking good is Shamaya Odain of Aline. She powered through, stopping the clock at 12.55 seconds. Springer's Marissa Watts, she's second here in 12.99 and third of Fracabino Forb of Harson College. And to the big boys, the under 20s in lane number 7. From college, Julian Ford, he's the man to beat. 11.26 seconds on the clock. Right there with him, foundations, the Quan Trotman, 11.33. And Parkinson's Tristan Harper was third, 11.59. And the other foundation boy, a name that would ring a bell, Josiah Atkins, surging ahead in the final 50 meters, actually jogging across the line in 11.49 seconds. Aline's DeAndre Walker was second, 11.57, and Graydon City's Cody Hamilton came in for third. Bisa Action is now in session. Anne Marie Burke, CBC Sports. Promoting positives in the youth. That will be the aim this year for the organizing committee of BSAC. Now, that announcement was made at a media conference held at Harrison College for the various sponsors of the championships. BSAC, which got underway today with that estimate our zone, has been one of the most anticipated track and field meets for over 30 years. And speaking at that media conference, assistant meet director Andrew Brathwaite said that while there is negativity surrounding the youth, there is also a lot of positives which need to be showcased. There is some negativity surrounding the youth with regards to violence in schools and that sort of stuff. And we want to use this championship this year more so to highlight the positive um, things that our young persons are doing. We are confident that there's way more positive than negative surrounding our youth. And we want to take the BSAT meet to allow the public to see the positive things that, that young people are doing. Along with the traditional prizes, this year's championships will also be used to award the Royal Commonwealth Society Trophy. Chairman of the Sports Committee at the charity, Ryan Brathwaite, explained the qualities needed to collect this prestigious award. This year, the society is celebrating its 150th anniversary. It's one of the oldest charities that, that are around, and um, we felt it quite fitting this year to partner with uh, BSAC to, to do what we call the Royal Commonwealth Society Trophy. And this trophy, as was mentioned by, by uh, Andrew, be awarded to the school team, which seems to be exemplifying the values of the Commonwealth, sportsmanship, you know, respect, um, fair play, and, and these are things that we want to encourage. So we're going to look for the team that exemplify these values, and that team will be awarded that special, that special trophy and award. Coming up, more from the BSAC Championships. It's back to BSAC, day one of competition, the estimated zone. And this time we're taking the field events. Again, here's CBC's Anne-Marie Burke. So while the track was hot with pace, the field events were serving up some action too. Here are two of the first zonal records to be broken. The under-20 girls shot put record was broken on the very first attempt as Romancia Audrin of Christchurch Foundation erased her old record of 10.58 meters to throw 10.77. But it was her final attempt that produced a new mark of 11.09. 
Second went to Springer Shante Seal. Her farthest throw was 10.23 meters, while her teammate Simone Carroll was third with a throw of 10.08 meters. So Springer was in with the double points. Not too far away, the boys on the 17 discus zone record was about to be rewritten, as in the sector was Nathan Crawford Wallace of Christchurch Foundation, whose name is now on the books with a measurement of 36.68 meters. The old distance was 36.58. Crawford Wallace is the one to beat in the final. The Ali's Jonathan Cox, he registered a 36.34 meter throw to be second best, while third was Harrison College's Kaelin King with 33.30 meters. Next door, the under 13 boys were high jumping, and Christchurch Foundation produced a winner in Mikai Boyne. He cleared the bar at 1.38 meters to take the victory. Also clearing 1.38 meters was St. Leonard's boys Ethan Thompson. He had one more knockdown than Boeing to take second. And while third went to Graydon City's Trey Best, he too cleared 1.38 meters but had more knockdowns than Boeing and Thompson. And over to the northern end of the stadium, the junior girls were competing in their javelin event and taking the win was Allen School's Rianne Holder. She threw 25.36 meters. Second was Harrison College's Asha Stevenson. Her throw was 22.82 meters, while third went to Foundation's Asabi Calendar with a throw of 22.33. That's some of the BISA action from the field. Anne-Marie Burke, CBC Sports. Well, thanks, Anne-Marie. And tomorrow's day two begins at 9 a.m. with field events, while the first track event will be the boys' under-20 400-meter hurdles. That'll be at 10 a.m. There will be no more setbacks for the Barbados Football Association's Wildy facility as the ongoing work to upgrade that facility 